to utilize the Chrome extension, and I'm going to use HubSpot as a mechanism to demonstrate that for you today. So, uh, so let me just uh, move away from from that and uh, and introduce you firstly to uh, to the uh, to the extension. So. In a, in a Chrome extension, what you have is an ability to, to click on this icon over here and allows you to search for, uh, for, for um, extensions to Chrome. So one of those things you can obviously do is search for GoTo, and there you go, I've got GoTo, I can install that, I've already got it installed in, uh, in my scenario. So once I have it deployed as, as one of my extensions, it actually appears in, uh, in, a, in a Chrome window um, in here. So, uh, so I've got this uh, this icon that's uh, that's uh, got a G for go to, and um, and that now monitors all my um, uh, all my systems, all my pages that uh, that are coming in, and uh, and it also monitors the state of the call uh, when a call comes in. So, if I, for example, um, route to that. Um, and I'll dial that extension uh, that, uh, that I have, what you'll find is that um, I'll get a screen pop uh, that I've got an incoming call, but I also have got a screen pop that's appeared over here on, and I've actually popped HubSpot. So in this instance, it took the number that, uh, that I presented and it matched it with, uh, with the number that is associated with Jake Breacher, and it brought up that contact. Okay, so how did that happen? How did this uh, this thing actually make it uh, uh, work in that scenario? Well, the Chrome extension has um, uh, this option to uh, to basically to to give you uh, you know a, a cogwheel over here that gives you some extension options. In those extension options, you get to select the account that you're going to be utilizing. So in my scenario. I actually used extension 1009, which is an extension on Deepak's demo PBX, but I could actually have selected just to utilize the GoToMobile. So if I wanted to, uh, to associate a screen pop and only receive the call on my mobile telephone, I could do that. If I similarly wanted to run it uh, just purely with a desktop application, or if I wanted to run with a handset, then those devices, as you can see, I've got a handset associated with another extension, then those devices are registered and I can select individual devices or all devices. Now, the reason why we actually have individual devices is because it can be annoying if you select all devices and suddenly you've got three devices that ring at the same time. So you can be quite selective in terms of what you're going to, to utilize in that scenario. So that's the first thing. Uh, once you've selected the extension, um, then you're ready to go. You can do a quick test to establish that. Then we have some extension settings that enable you to do the smarts. So what we're doing over here is we're basically doing a bit of a call, um, a lookup to see uh, if we need to, to pop a particular website. So by default, um, you, can, uh, you can select to have the caller ID search when the call is ringing. There is an option to actually do it after the call has been answered. So if you want to do the screen pop after the, you've answered the call rather than uh, during the ring section, you can do that. Now, what we do is we include three different um, um, pre-built uh, search sites already. So I can have a LinkedIn search and basically just looks into LinkedIn and looks at the caller ID and finds that contact for me. It also gives you an ability to, uh, to use custom templates. And that's what I did to, uh, to use um, for the integration in HubSpot. So when I look at that, uh, if I actually click uh, edit, I can see that I've given it a name HubSpot and I've given um, this, uh, this text, um, which is, you know, uh, gobbledygook to, uh, to most people. But it's pretty easy to actually to calculate. So one of the things that you'll have in HubSpot is you'll have a search button. So when I do a search in, um, in HubSpot, the moment I start typing in different numbers, 0413, for example, it actually provides me with that information over here. So this is essentially what I need to do. I need to say, okay, I am going to copy this text and I'm going to, um, to put it into my extension um, up to this point uh, into into here. And then at the end where I've got the, so I might as well just do that and show you how it's done, uh, control V. And then at the end, what you do is you specify whether you're looking to, to use uh, one of those codes. So the query and is equal to uh, one of those codes. So is it caller ID? Is it, uh, you know, uh, um, a, a full extension, uh, based format, so, uh, you, you know, US-centric with, uh, with, with 
no dashes versus dashes, or you could use the uh, the E164 format to, uh, to look for those uh, for those calls. So the good thing about that is I um, I basically selected the first one um, and it works straight away. So uh, so I was quite happy with uh, with that. Um, so as you can see, I've got this uh, configuration and it's done pretty quickly. Um, now I've looked at the uh, the, the text over here. So, uh, so this is on my contacts page. Uh, this is a search on my contacts page. I could have done a search globally. So, uh, so um, I have a global search. And if I now wanted to, uh, to look at all my different contacts uh, or maybe my tasks, or maybe, you know, all the things that are available through this filter, you know, contacts, tickets, deals, tasks, et cetera, then I can actually uh, do a global search. And now if I type in um, uh, 0413, it basically gives me a different uh, parameter for for the search to uh, to to look. It gives me a global view for uh, for all that. So it has views all, and it basically will look at all the different parameters. I chose to search based on uh, on contacts to give me that uh, capability uh, through um, uh, through that integration. So nice and easy to uh, to get that screen pop, get the contact up, and uh, and you've got the uh, the the connectivity available. Now, second thing, I've got uh, a list of contacts uh, here that I've created. This is sort of like my uh, my dummy HubSpot website. And in those contacts, I've got different uh, different contacts. What I can do is I can hover over one of those, uh, those contacts and I can, uh, it recognizes that number straight away. So I can basically go out there and click for that, uh, for that call to be made. And you can see that I'm initiating the call. And now that call is going to go to, uh, to my uh, mobile telephone, et cetera, and it's going to, uh, to get that. So I'm basically making that call directly to um, uh, to the destination of, uh, of that caller through this. Now, the cool thing about that is it doesn't have to be just those numbers over here. It actually works for anything in a browser environment. So if I go and uh, do a search for Bankwest and they have a number that's, uh, that's presented um, in here, it always happens, sort of like jumps to, to the bottom. Um, it actually identifies it. So it identifies that I've got a 131719 and I can click to, to call that uh, uh, the number through my application. So an, uh, nice and easy. The benefit of that is it's not just for, uh, for uh, my dialing within contacts and dialing if whatever uh, that I find in, uh, in HubSpot. It actually works on just about every uh, instance of the application. The second thing that I really wanted to do is uh, to take a moment um, and change text a little bit. So one of the things that we do have is an ability within HubSpot to integrate with GoToWebinar. So when I go into uh, into the um, uh, the marketplace within uh, HubSpot and I go to uh, to App Marketplace and I search for Goto, you will find that I've got GoToWebinar uh, included in that. Now in here. I've got a lot of information uh, that's available to me in terms of uh, a video uh, that I was half tempted to, to basically just plagiarize and play it over here. Um, but you can actually go out there and, uh, and view all the functionality that you can, uh, you can deploy. It gives you some of the features in detail, so screenshots of some of those, uh, those details. It gives you how the data is shared. And down the bottom, it also gives you visibility of how much webinar is. So, uh, so essentially um, for, for, uh, for being able to, uh, to find and promote uh, go to webinar directly through, through HubSpot. Now, what I did is I did the integration into, into HubSpot and uh, and what I've got is um, an ability to uh, to uh, to go into um, in, into that um, uh, that marketplace and have a look at all my connected apps. So I've got a connected app which is GoToWebinar already, right? So I've already downloaded that. I enabled it. It was very easy for me to enable that. Um, it recognized my um, my single sign-on into GoToWebinar straight away, and I was able to uh, to to jump that. If I have a look at the Go to Settings. Um, it will show me what webinars I've got uh, that are taking place. And I've got one, uh, go to connect for the partner, which is on the 15th of uh, June, um, which is synchronized with, um, uh, with, with GoToWebinar. I could actually synchronize 
all the events that are taking place. So I've got some uh, some future events and I've got some past events that, uh, that are uh, located in here. Now they're all sort of like sample webinars, et cetera, that, uh, that I've created in order to be able to show you something because otherwise it just becomes empty. But I've got an ability to, uh, to bring up webinars in here. Now, what does that mean? Well, firstly, um, uh, HubSpot has a really nice uh, landing page uh, system. So I can go in here and I can go into landing pages and I can build my own uh, landing page for, uh, for an event. So I've created one. So I've got a, a page that, uh, that I basically created. And if you uh, click on that, you'll find that this is what it looks like. Um, it basically says you don't want to miss this event. You know, I'm kind of like into, into the night sky. So, uh, so if I put in the details for, for this, um, 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 Bob Jane at um, gmail.com. I'm sure there's somebody like that that already exists. So I sub oh, look at that. It's smarter than that. And uh, and I can submit that. Now that's going to go into my uh, into my HubSpot. So I'll be able to, to go into uh, all my uh, metrics. So I've got uh, visibility of, uh, of people uh, that have actually uh, connected to that. And I'll also have that visibility into my GoToWebinar application. So if I go to my GoToWebinar applications, I'll have visibility of, uh, of the person that, that has registered on that scenario. The other thing that I can do is I can also look at lists. So now if I want to promote the solution, if I wanted to, to go out to, to others, what I can do is I can create um, a list in the system and those lists will be able to, uh, to basically create uh, different, uh, different opportunities. So I've got this list over here that I want to go out there and now I want to promote to those individuals, right? So, uh, so based on those leads, I can actually add some additional GoToWebinar filters. So one of those filters could be um, a GoToWebinar based filter. So if I select a GoToWebinar filter, and then some of the things that uh, that are that I'll have in the in the go to webinar is essentially things like has the contact um, attended, has the contact not attended, has the contact registered, or have they not registered? So directly through uh, through all the registered contacts that uh, that have come through to on on the website, I will be able to create a list and say, look, um, I don't want to go back to the people that have already registered because they're already registered, but I want to go out there and look for all my contacts and select the ones that have not yet registered and blast them again with uh, with an email to uh, to uh, remind them that we're going to have a webinar coming up next uh, next week. So we've got this capability not only in HubSpot, we've got that capability in um, in other products such as Salesforce. In fact, we uh, with Salesforce we integrate with Marketo. So GoToWebinar has some great capabilities from an integration perspective. And today I really wanted to spend some time on that because it is a, a great um, uh, part of our GoToConnect portfolio. Uh, 